How do you deal with an overly friendly neighbor who asks too many questions about your life when you happen to be outdoors at the same time? I live in an extremely religious community, Mormons, so this happens all the time. I used to try to be vague and give hints but the best technique I have found is this one. I am kind of a private person. And then I compliment them on something I have noticed. Nice grass or hey thanks for checking on me, I know it comes from a good place. Oh Mormons, you got to love M. I live in Utah, so I can relate. Difference is that once they found out we weren't Mormon, we pretty much turned invisible. Edit, just felt like I should add a bit more since this comment is gaining traction. Utah is kind of a strange place, and Utah Mormons are not like other Mormons. Everything in the whole state was built and run by Mormons, the whole state has this sense of community. Everything is connected. Outsiders are not unwelcome, they are just outsiders. It's hard to put it to words, but it's not hostile. It's just that once they figured out you are not part of this massive interconnected group, then they move on. Someone else mentioned people coming around to ask about wards and it is spot on. I also want to add that my parents' neighbors are very friendly and have always gotten along with them. Edit 2, just want to give a shout out to all y'all Utahns in here, and a very big shout out to any of y'all from Ogden. Utah is silly, but it's home. Yup. I just moved to my neighborhood back in February and everyone was super nice until they asked what ward I was in so they could transfer my records. I said, oh I'm not a Mormon. And that was the end of that. Not to sound stupid but this is the first time I'm hearing the word ward being referenced this way. What is it exactly? Thanks ahead for answering. A ward means neighborhood or designated area most often used outside of the Mormons in politics. Mormons don't get to choose what church building or congregation they go to. They are assigned a building and time slot based off of their address. You are part of an assigned ward. So two Mormons that live on the opposite side of the same street may be required to attend different churches. That's crazy. I'm pretty sure each ward is a church slash congregation. I'm not Mormon but some of my HS friends were and that's how they used that word. Yup, when I was a kid I had to stay there for a few years since my dad was military. Back then Montgomery Ward was still a business and I just got into the habit of telling people that was my ward. Kind of went off the rails if they wanted more details though or pressed at all. Edit, nothing of interest. People coming around to ask about wards. Wards? Welp, at the moment I only have that horseshoe up, and the rosemary by the garden gate, but I have dream catchers on order and a witch coming around next week too. Wait. Where are you going? Just like a game of Dota but more polite. Edit, r slash Dota 2 leaked out. Reddit link. Dota? Dota, like that bass hunter song? Love thy neighbor? Unless he ain't one of us. I found that to be true of all the devout Mormons I've met. I once worked at a Mormon-owned company that was staffed with 90% Mormons, and the vibe was very distant. One of the other non-Mormons told me that they look you up in the book and if you're not there, i.e. not Mormon, they don't want to have much to do with you. I could go whole days without anyone speaking to me, but no one was ever out and out unfriendly. Very insular group, in general. As an introvert, this sounds heavenly. Please, let me live near people who will leave me the F alone. I feel like it'd be a flip side thing. Like. Now you are just silently judged for letting your grass grow too long. Or you aren't raising your kids right. Or whatever else. I basically made peace with the terms that once I am in a place where we can move out of the suburbs and move to just outside the suburbs with a decent plot of land on either side of me, that's the ticket. Got to find that comfortable level of being away from people but not away from convenience. As long as my neighbors have to make a conscious effort and at least a 60 seconds walk to even see what I'm doing, that's far enough. It's the getting flanked when I get home from work and picking up the mail, or taking out the trash that drives me crazy. Visual contact does not mean consent for conversation. Same. Once they found out I wasn't warm and they shunned me. Maybe I need to move to Utah. I could use a good shunning. Oh I'll shun you so hard. I will shun you so hard you'd think you were a child in the foster care system and your foster parents forgot your birthday for the third time in two years. Don't threaten me with a good time. 
shun the non-believer, shun. I'm that neighbor. I'm an older lady who lives alone and I'm just trying to make a connection with my neighbors. If something happens to me or my pets, I'd like someone nearby to at least notice they haven't seen me in a while or worry about my pets edit, wow, thanks for the swag. Second edit, come on over neighbors. I'm making brownies. I truly like having some small conversations with my neighbors and wish more would partake. Just make sure you aren't approaching the same neighbor every single time you see them outside. I no longer have a good relationship with one of my neighbors because every single solitary time I was outside, her boyfriend insisted on coming to the fence and talking to me. I finally had to ask him to come by more sparingly, and he took that as no one in your household should ever dare speak to me again. Sometimes I just want to enjoy the sunshine and silence on my patio, it's not a dig at anyone. I just want to be alone damn it. LOL. I love to say hi for a minute, but I like my alone time too. At my last house, my neighbors came out to talk to me every time I went to sit outside. I put up a screen to deflect the rain from my deck and it acted as a shield for me. I love my neighbors but the peace was so nice. My absolute favorite neighbor is like that. If we are both outside, she asks how I am, compliments my garden slash holiday decorations, pets the dog etc. But within a few minutes, she goes back to her day. And when she sees I'm on my way out somewhere, I get a wave. No approach for a chat. Friendly, kind, and his boundaries, the ideal neighbor. Hey, I'm a stay-at-home mom who only has kids under 5 to talk to all day, I love the random small talk from neighbors. Please, tell me your stories. I'm all for it. Adult interaction is very welcome. You ever been in a storm, Wally? Not a thunderstorm. But a storm of fists raining down on your head. Pummeling you in the chest until you think your heart is going to stop. You ever been in a storm like that Wally? The execution of that line is just masterful. Dennis might be my favorite for his powerful delivery of intense dialogue like this. Laughing out loud. If you say another word, I swear to God I will slice you into a million little pieces, and put those pieces in a box, a glass box, that I will display on my mantle. Think of the smell, you bitch. The teeth slash jaw clench he does during the implication bit is borderline genius. You keep saying that word, what implication? Start with, and if that doesn't work, YouTube link. Man when he's like hot one today huh? Dennis yeah? Response is one of my favorite moments from the entire show. In my head I've been doing this for years since this EP aired whenever someone asks me something stupid or obvious. It's always the little things with this show. References that will never leave me but aren't necessarily quotable with other people. Another example is an earlier season where they leave Charlie in charge of the bar. He picks up a calculator and is like what are you? I love the what are you it's always in my head. And from one of the newer ones when Charlie gets smart and is back to being dumb, plus EBO. Dennis showing exasperation is always the best. Like when he's getting his fetish crap from his trunk. I like to bind. I like to be, bound. It's so natural. I'm not allowed to eat the skin, D. I'm not allowed. Think of the smell. You haven't thought of the smell, you bitch. Glenn Howerton is an absolute gem. It's too bad he's never gotten the chance to do something major but I'm grateful we get to enjoy his talents on this weird little show, being the best sociopath he can be. Fun fact, he was second choice for the lead role in Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy if they didn't get Chris Pratt. You have just sent me on a roller coaster of Wally and gay Rich Mac clips. Not a thunderstorm, but a storm of fists raining down on your head. Blasting you in the face. Pummeling you in the stomach, hitting you in the chest so hard you think your heart's going to stop. You ever been in a storm like that, Wally? That must be nosy Wally, coming to see what all the fighting is about. Wow! The responses. Some good soon are clearly trying to be funny, but some are disturbing. Look, it is important to be on good, if not, friendly terms with your neighbors. You will have them in your life for a long time whether you like it or not. The responses that recommend short, 
vague answers where you follow up with questions of your own are the best. You may very well discover a new friend or you may both realize you don't click and you will naturally not take it any further. But you will be left with a neighbor that is at least on good terms. Remember they may be the person to notice you being robbed when you are not home, or notice the smoke from a fire first, or be accepting of the noise from a large party you decide to throw, there could be a lot of reasons they are talkative and not all of them are them just being nosy or a dick. They could be genuinely interested, lonely, had a bad neighbor in that house previously, etc. to name a few. Edit, wow. This really blew up. Thank you for all the awards, gold and silver. That's never happened to me. I've tried to read all the comments and clearly the whole concept of community, neighbor, friendship, loneliness, etc. has struck a nerve. I hope that original poster finds something useful and relevant to his situation. Seriously. The answers that recommend angry confrontations or talk of bodily functions are just ridiculous, and probably from 14-year-olds who have never actually had to navigate relationships with people in the wild. Having your neighbor on good terms is really wonderful, if not crucial. They will be at hand to borrow an egg or help you in an emergency. Hell, my neighbor called me to come sit with her as her husband died. All her family was far away and she needed someone who could come over in 30 seconds to hold her hand and be with her as he took his final breaths. That's what neighbors do, there's no sense in alienating people. It's very important. These people as you said could have never been homeowners. I would give anything for an overly friendly neighbor at this point. I have spent 20 years trying to find one that at the very least effing waves. I wave at my neighbors. Mostly they just stare back at me. The neighborhood has changed in the last few years. I miss all the people that would wave back. Same here. I always wave and smile, but only a few will wave back. Our neighbor directly next door even called the police on us for parking on the street. It wasn't illegal and the police told her so, I wrote her a nice letter about how we'll probably be living next to each other for a long time and I want to get along, hoping to patch things up, and I included a gift card to a local restaurant as an olive branch. She wrote me back apologizing and telling me to park there whenever. Then the next time we did she called the police again, person shrugging, that was almost six years ago, but I still think of her as the crazy bitch with the yappy dogs. At this point I'd just like a neighbor who doesn't call the police on me for parking in front of my own house. Wow. What you did was really awesome and if she had any hint of normalcy, would have worked. She's totally crazy. Same here. Everyone runs to their mailboxes and makes sure to avoid eye contact. Now I am not a social butterfly by any means, I just feel like it's less awkward to give a wave or a good morning than not. I moved into the neighborhood about 20 years ago. All the old folks have passed away. I guess I'm one of the old folks now. I miss the young couple that lived next door. They would ask for small handyman favors occasionally. I was more than happy to help because that's being a good neighbor would always say they moved into the neighborhood because as they were driving around looking at empty lots to build on everyone waved as they passed. We would have a few cocktails occasionally on Friday nights. They moved last winter to be closer to new jobs and school. They were good people and I miss them. Ha ha ha. Now I'm all mopey. My wife and I are that young couple. We've lived in the same place for the last five years for residency and we know we're moving in June. Our next door neighbors are the loveliest people, and not only are we going to be so sad to leave them, but our dogs are going to miss each other so much. The husband is being all stoic and offering help with finding a new place and connections in our next city, but the wife refuses to talk about us moving because she'll start crying. Oh, you live across the street from me. Lovely young couple moved in about five to six years ago, got married three years ago, and had a baby this past March. We were invited to the wedding, filmed the baby when she came home, and got to hold her, and I take them home baked bread every few days from my sourdough, which I started the day the baby was born. They're looking to move to be closer to work and friends, and I always smile and say I'm wishing the best for them, I have to change the subject quickly before I burst into tears missing them before they've even left. Good neighbors are a priceless commodity in today's world. I moved into a great neighborhood and love my neighbors. I routinely house sit while they winter someplace warmer and they are quick to lend tools and I'm in a home improvement bind. The older gentleman recently told me they were planning on downsizing and I was slash and legit heartbroken. Partially for a loss of these friends and partly for anxiety over who might be moving in. I think I got lucky. 
The new neighbors moved in just after COVID hit. They are older than me and seem really nice. We have had a few socially distant chats. And they have three big dogs I can't wait to pet. Exactly. I share a duplex with a retired widow whom I thought to be obnoxious and nosy, at first, but then I realized that she is actually super lonely. It's the least I can do to chat for a few minutes here and there. Plus she has definitely come through for me by letting me borrow stuff, keeping an eye out for packages, and stuff like that. Same situation here. Sometimes she can drive us a little batty, but she is always happy to help out in any way and constantly brings us all kinds of plants and fruit from her garden. If you're not very open to chat, just keep things polite yet quick. It's nice to have a good relationship with your neighbors. If they do delve into personal questions, just say that's a bit personal, I'd rather not talk about that. Most important thing is to be polite. Don't be a butthole, or act standoffish when it's not necessary. Honestly, just use some common sense. Don't be a redditor, is all I'm saying. Hey man. Nice lawn. What do you use on that? It's personal. Spoiler, it's the blood of his enemies, and the lamentation of their women. That's how his lawn is so luxurious. I think his neighbor might be Conan don't call me O'Brien the Sumerian. See, we just said don't be a Redditor. But nobody ever listens to advice, so, here we are. Conan was a Sumerian, not a Sumerian. Blood is also a very good fertilizer. They sell bags of dried, flaked blood right beside the potting soil and manure at the supermarket. Don't be a Redditor. I've repeatedly seen people on AskReddit say that they hate small talk and prefer to jump right into weird-ass convos with people they don't know. I'm sure it works sometimes but sometimes I feel like the average Redditor has never been outside. Don't be a Redditor, is all I'm saying. Good life advice. Don't be a Redditor, is all I'm saying. Literally the best advice ever given on Reddit. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.